So today we are looking at what I believe is one of the most important colors in a palette, which is Potter's Pink, which is PR233. If you aren't aware, pigment numbers that start with P, so pigment, pigment group is red, and then the number that follows is sort of how pigments are identified. So I have four Potter's Pinks in my palette, and my mom has one extra in hers, and for the sake of talking about Potter's Pink and why I think it's so important, especially if you love granulating mixes, I have borrowed her Potter's Pink, and so we are going to be looking at five different Potter's Pinks. So we've got the Roman Smalls, we've got Cosmic Creations, we have Watercolor Candies Potter's Pink, we have Soliloquy, and we have A Gallows. And even though they're all the same pigment, they are all slightly different hues, and that does give a different look to the final product. Uh, this isn't going to be like my normal swatching videos where they're really like long and detailed. Instead, we're going to be looking simply at the color and then we're going to be looking at why I find it such an essential color and why I even have a pan of it always in my travel palette. Um, it is a color that I always make space for continuously because it is such an essential color. I realized I actually have one more Potter's Pink. This one is from 31 Purple Fish. And it is a color that I tried to get for ages. It was out of stock. Um, she doesn't carry it super often. And I was eventually able to get it. So um, I'm going to label this page and then we are going to look at all these colors. Potter's Pink is definitely a color that needs to sit for probably three or four minutes with water on it just to soften. You'll often hear people say that it re-wets really badly from pans and you should use it from a tube. I find that as long as I let it sit, it re-wets just fine and I don't really have any issues with it. So I do have many different variations of this color and that is because even though they are the same pigment, they will swatch out differently. So the A Gallo isn't actually mine and it swatches incredibly pale, I find, whereas some of the others are much darker in their color. And that's just to do with pigment variation. And Potter's Pink is definitely a color where you'll find lots of that pigment variation, just depending on how the color was mauled. Even in commercial brands, there's a big difference if you look at swatches. So I think currently the look of the 31 Purple Fish, I like how it looks quite a lot. Um, it's been recently the one I've reached for the most. Um, but these two, the Watercolor Candies and the Dusty Rose are the newest Potter's Pink to my palette. I've had the Soliloquy one for the longest, and it is what started my obsession with Potter's Pink because I think it's such a brilliant color. And as you can see, it just granulates so beautifully. This is Fabriano cold press paper, so it naturally, like, colors look, I find, quite nice on it. But I like the Roman Soliloquy. Is the A Gallo one actually this pink? Yes, it's actually that pale and pink. So that's just like variations. This is six different Potter's Pink. And as you can see, like there's definitely tonal variation. Um, so what I can do up here is swatch them side by side. let them blend into each other and then you can see that the... 
these ones are definitely more similar than these ones are. But there is still some... Oh yeah, no, there's still a difference. That's different potter's paint. So as you can see, the binder of Cosmic Creations is sort of repelling the 31 purple fish. Um, but that's just some brands play less nicely with others in certain cases. Um, and potter's paint is a color that naturally takes a whole bunch of binder. And one, the thing that I love about potter's paint is how nicely it granulates which in turn makes granulating mixes incredibly easy and beautiful. And so I'm going to let this page dry and we'll look at what the swatches look like dried down. And then we'll get into why it is such an essential color for mixes. Now that they're all dry, you can definitely see the tonal difference. So the A Gallo actually dried down quite similar to the others. The Cosmic Creations is probably the most pink, like rich pink. I think how I'm painting currently, the 31 Purple Fish and the Roman Small are still my favorites. The Soliloquy is always going to be a favorite just because it's what I've had in my palette for the longest and I'm familiar with how it works. But for the sake of this next step, I think we're going to use the Roman Small because it's a full pan and it is easy to replace compared to some of the others and far less expensive to replace. But I think it's important to show that there is, as pigments go, I find there's the most variation in Potter's Pink and um, PBR7, which is so many different brands. I see so many people in Facebook groups go, I've got a PBR7, I don't need any others, and I go, yes, there's. you've got one version, but there are like 30 others, and they all look totally different depending on how it, the earth was processed. So, we're going to move on to step two on why, as a color in your palette, this is such a great color. The reason it's such an essential color in my palette is because lots of the granulating mixes we love from brands use it as a base specifically Schmincke. So Tundra Orange is Potter's Pink, Yellow Ochre, and PBR7. I'm not quite sure which version. I've pulled what I think is the most similar version in my palette and let's find out. Glacier Green is Cobalt Teal and Potter's Pink. Tundra Pink is ultramarine blue and potter's pink and then i have two mixes from cosmic creations that both also include potter's pink in them there are also two other colors from schmincke that include potter's pink in the mix unfortunately i don't have them in my palette and mom doesn't have them in hers these schmincke's actually came from mom's palette i don't have many of the schmincke super granulating in my own personal palette so to start with I'm going to swatch these colors out on this page and then we're going to look at creating your own mixes and how to sort of go about it using the colors that create these colors but also one that I want to test out simply because I have the paint in my palette. So now that it's all labeled, normally you want to use granulating colors wet on wet. But for the sake of just looking at sort of color, I'm gonna see if I can get away with not doing this fully wet on wet. And I'm also gonna leave space at the end just so that I can show what the mixes we create ourselves look like. If you notice, both of these are the same pigment mix but in different concentrations. And that's actually really common with granulating mixes because the more of a pigment you add, and then whatever ratio you add it in, that will change the mix considerably. Under orange might have to end up in my palette. I 
as you can see, it's really all about ratios because these three colors all use the same pigments, but they do all look quite different on the page. And that is the fun of granulating colors. And all of these colors, in fact, use PR233, which I think is great. Um, I chose a selection of colors. For the own mixes, I chose a selection of colors, including colors that make up some of these mixes. And so what I'm going to do is start by creating the mixes that we've already got or attempting to. And I'm going to start with what I think is going to be the most challenging and do this orange. I've never attempted this orange before. I have attempted these ones because I used these mixes quite a lot before I ended up acquiring them for my palette. The fun of Potter's Pink is that it's quite easy to mix with, I find. Like, it mixes well with other colors. And the fact that they give you the pigment numbers in sort of the order that the pigments are in the paint does make it slightly easier to figure out the paints. Hmm. That's not an awful first attempt. Um, So, it is, you're not, I don't find that you ever get something as nice as the super granulating in your own mixes, but Potter's Pink is an essential in my palette because it does make it possible to sort of emulate those colors. I think my brown was wrong, but I thought my brown was wrong to begin with. So, PG50 at a higher concentration of Potter's Pink for Glacier Green. And already that was too much pink. So depending on the color, it really won't take much pink to totally overpower the rest of the mixture. Um, and in this case, I think I've got the wrong cobalt. My cobalt isn't bright enough for what we're doing. But as you can see, like, we're not that far off of sort of what I'm looking for. Um, let's do Violet Horizon next. Or Shadow Rose. Because I think I can start with Shadow Rose and then I can add more blue to it and end up with Violet Horizon. Or we end up. Mm, no, not enough blue. Put Violet Horizon on sort of the first try. You won't ever end up with something as rich as the full strength simply because you're not starting with the raw pigment. Um, but you can end up with pretty mixes, and I think that's sort of the point of having Potter's Pink in your palette, is that you can make something pretty on the go if you need to. And in this case, I'm just like tweaking ever so slightly to create what I need. It still needs a little touch on the blue. At this point, there's really not much pink left on my palette. This one, Tundra Pink is odd because theoretically, the blue is so overpowering that I think it should have less of the blue than it has of anything else. And it doesn't. According to their pigment list, it actually has more blue than it has Potter's Pink. Um, and I haven't figured out how to successfully do a mix that has more of the blue than it has Potter's Pink and end up with anything close to that color. Um, so I don't know if the pigment information is wrong. That's been what my thought process has been when it comes to Schmincke Tundra Pink, is that maybe their pigment numbers got flipped.
That's not awful. Um, what does it look like washed out? So what I'm doing is just working from, I've got, I pulled out, I have a very large palette of just pure colors. Um, I'm working on growing that palette more. So just straight pigments, not mixes. I didn't care about that for a really long time, but now I definitely see the benefit of it because it means that I can do videos like this and experiments like this where we're creating mixes out of pure mixes your pigments. Um, let's try... So this is cobalt turquoise, in this case I've chosen the dark version just because I like it better. And uh, potter's pink, obviously, I end up going to end up having to re-wet my potter's pink momentarily because I am almost out of the workable. Oh, I think this is haze pink actually. I think this is the recipe for haze pink, and I went, I don't have it, but I'm gonna write it down anyways. Let's see if I can add more pink and make this pinker. I'm getting right out pinker. Because mm -hmm. I believe the haze colors were special edition with Jackson's, and so they weren't super easy to get. So as you can see, like this is all that same cobalt teal pink mix. And so all I've done is I've added more pink or more teal to it. Um, and we'll add a little bit more pink. And we'll just do the final. So as you can see, like we've lost almost all the teal. It's almost been fully consumed by the pink. But there's still a little bit. And that's one of the great things about doing a project like this. Let's do... Da, da, da. Oh, I pulled out Cobalt Violet, so... PV14 plus PR233. I don't know what these two are going to do. I just like the look of Cobalt Violet. I thought it might do something interesting. My next one is pink, though it might also do nothing because it's got like almost no color to it. Or maybe we're just going to need a whole bunch of colors pink to make it do anything. And that's an okay option as well. So as colors go, Potter's Pink is something I use very much like this, where I'm just experimenting with color and changing how things look. And we very much changed this is what I've done evolves well to each color. There. 
Now you get a better idea of sort of what we've mixed in. The last one we're gonna do, we're just doing because I think it'll be fun, not because I would probably ever actually do this in a piece. <sighs> Simply because it's on my desk and I wanna use it somewhere. Um, we are doing PB six plus P -G. So if you don't know, P B eighty six is the pigment code for uh what in my opinion is one of the best blues. It is Yinmin Blue. It is a recent addition to my palette. Um, for the sake of this, we're gonna start, we're gonna go in the opposite order. So we started with a lot of pink and we're just gonna keep adding tiny bits of blue to it. Mm. Well, that didn't take very much at all. Oh, that's stunning. And I am lucky enough that I was gifted a pan, and so I thought, why not use what, in my opinion, is the most granulating blue with the most granulating pink, and just see what happens. It's like it consumed all the pink already. I have to say though, it's really pretty. I add more. Well, I do get a nice like rich purple. So somewhere along the way I missed the over added blue. But it is possible to get like a really rich purple. Probably washes out really nicely. Oh yeah, it does. All right, so would I ever actually use Yenmin in a mix like this? Probably not, but for the sake of looking at it, because I have it, um, as you can see, it's quite a versatile color. Well, PR233 is. Uh, and it's definitely one of the colors that I reach for most often in palette just because it's an amazing color for doing something like this where you want to create those granulating mixes. Especially if you don't have a whole lot of space in your palette and you're working with a primarily pure color palette. Um, I would say it doesn't mix as nicely with colors that are already mixes. So if you're already working with like a Payne's Gray or a Shadow Violet where it's already a mix of pigments. Potter's Pink doesn't always work as nicely to create these granulating mixes, but if you're working with a pure, just single pigment color, I find that it's really hard to find a mix that I don't like. <laughs> so I decided to just show off some of my favorites, but also like look at the colors that people are familiar with seeing, like we've all seen the Schmincke colors on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube, and it is possible to create them. I don't. I'd rather just have them pre-made up. I would find it stressful to be trying to color match them every time I needed to mix them because they are such precise mixes. A little bit in either direction can give you one of these two results or a myriad of other results. And so I think it's important to know which color you're looking at, but it is possible to create your own. Now that they're all dry, you can definitely see like how similar some of the colors are. I thought the orange was further off than it was. I think it probably was just the wrong brown and I'd chosen a brown that settles slightly less though you can definitely tell like you're not going to get as rich of a color as you did on the full strength as you're ever going to get from the washed up sections these bottom two are probably the most surprising mixes to me i had a feeling like the yin min mix was just going to be stunning anyways but i don't tend to mix with cobalt teal dark um, 
it's in my palette. I love having it in my palette, but it's not one that I normally mix with. I did see that it was the color mixture for Haze Pink, and seeing as I didn't have Haze Pink, I decided to see how close I could get to what Haze Pink looks like. I think this one is most similar to what the Schmincke Haze Pink looks like, but seeing as I don't have the pan to compare it to, I can't say for certain. I think these two give you a pretty good idea though of how, just how little color it takes to really change the color. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I choose having the colors in my palette versus mixing them every time. So traveling with Potter's Pink for me is a must. Just because it does give me the freedom to create these mixes and when I travel I'm generally working on pieces that are smaller than two inches and so I don't need to be able to mix the colors multiple times. I just need them to be a one and done. And so having a single pan of a color works well. I hope this was helpful if you've been going what's this pink color for? It's a weird color to use by itself. I totally agree with you. I didn't get it at first. I now have far too many versions of them as you can probably tell. If you've got any questions, please leave them below. I will do my best to answer all of them. Uh, if you have specific questions about colors, it's probably best to shoot me a DM via Instagram as I can respond with pictures about colors there and I can't respond with pictures via YouTube comments.